Hey guys, Bryce again here at the X Pocket Performance Facility in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. And this is our little micro lab area, like to call it, where we're working with individual players, small groups, and with their skill set of stick handling, saucer passes, multitasking, decision making, um, and just really challenging them to go outside of their element. Now, we don't really time anything in this little area because we're more of the one-on-one -on -one instruction, like I mentioned. So this is where you make mistakes, this is where you trip, this is where you fall down, this is where you, where you get frustrated. But you know what, it's that frustration that makes you a better player. It's that perseverance of not wanting to give up. And what we do in here changes every day. Like there's so many different uh, skills and drills that we do and exercises, but a big core function is our x pucks here where we do a lot of figure eights around them, where there'll be the vertical figure eights where we really want kids to roll their wrists and they shift their body in great hockey body position. This is vertical. We go horizontal, moving. And what's really important is if you see for me how I'm down in my hockey ready position, knees bent, body ready to move whatever direction. A lot of times when we get kids come in here for the first couple times, they're so stiff. They, they have their legs locked, their arms are stretched, and they look like ten men. And half of what we teach and what we coach is just getting kids and young players comfortable understanding they need to be fluid. They need to, they need to know, understand how to shift their weight, move their arms. And so that when they're stick handling, that, that the puck doesn't always move with them. You know, you see this a lot up here, you know, when they first come in. And by the end, they're moving, they're calling different things, they're calling colors and numbers. And what I mean by that is that with our hockey vision trainer, we're engaging their thought process on what they're going to do next by having to call out yellow, four, two, blue, eight, six, four. And you saw the, there's a couple of arrows. When you see arrows, they make either pass into our X-passers, a forward arrow, you got a saucer into the saucer box. And what this does, it just adds another degree and component to the overall concept of what we do here and how many reps and how many exercises. And as the kids progress, we make things more difficult. And there's just endless different things where, you know, we'll just change the course where they got to, you know, do a come around here where they might have to come up and they're passing right into the saucer box. Right. And so you see this. So we tell kids. So in this situation here, what happens a lot is that we design things that are challenging. And even myself, sometimes I'm not always going to make the sauce into the box. But what's really important is that we're telling kids you've got to stay in the game mentally. Right? You've got to stay in the game. And so if you, if you don't make the saucer pass, quickly get the puck and go until you do make it. Right? Don't give up. If you're doing the famous drill over here with got a lot of views, um, which is a staple thing that we've been doing in our training facility, is the Connor McDavid moving your feet stick handling. Now, the reason why I like that and why it's so important why we do it is because a lot of kids can't separate their upper part, their upper body from the lower body. What I mean by that is that they always move with the puck. They can't have the puck over here and then move to the other side with the puck, right? And so when you get on the ice, sometimes you have to be able to go around the guy when you, and have the puck on the upside of your body. So, you know, so you, as you saw Connor McDavid do, a lot of the footwork here is keeping the puck in the middle and he's crossing over, keeping the puck in the middle, right? So the very, the very good drill to teach a young player how to separate the puck from the body. Now this is another station when we get kids in here and we purposely use the deviators because they're taller. They have to actually pick their feet up. And you'll see kids when they come, they'll knock it over and, and you'll see them stop and get frustrated. And I say, no, no, keep in the game, stay in the game. Hey. You get tripped on the ice, you fall on the ice, what are you going to do? You're going to give up? No. Keep going. You can still go over this. Right? You knock over the other one, it doesn't matter. Stay in the game because half the battle in hockey is overcoming adversity. When you make a mistake, you got to be able to get back at it. And so we do different progressions with all of this stuff. And then once the kids become more and more comfortable with what they're doing, then we add the timing. We've got the total game changer which I've mentioned and talked about in other videos. We've got the dangle zone, which another time movement course, right? We'll work with the, the shooting lane here, you know, the different pockets. And 
At the end of the day, after you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes, the kids leave here working on individual skills, which is something that's just so tough to do nowadays because ice is expensive, um, you can't come by it, but even when you get on the ice, right, how often do your coaches have the time to work on your stick handling, make sure you're moving back and forth, are you calling out colors, you know, how are they challenging you while you're multitasking? So this is just a little sample set of things that we do in both our facilities. We've got a facility in Minnesota and a facility obviously here in New Jersey and then countless other facilities that we've helped design, build and add different components like you see here. So anyways, just giving you a little snapshot on what we do here for off-ice training, hockey specific. I'm Bryce, till next time.